has a template and that has the defaults. So whenever you create a user account, so these you know, uh, files from these two directories will be used. So let's look into that here. Dash A, dash A means uh, that is A with A switch means it's going to show all the contents here. So we have bash logout, logout script for you know, what's a profile, bash RC, uh, Emacs, KDE, that's a KDE desktop for Mozilla configurations, ZHSHRC, Emacs, uh, Emacs writer. So these are the basic profiles, right? What they have. So then we have GNOME, okay, GNOME desktop configuration files. Okay. So you that. BFS 2.0. Oh. Alright, so we have what is this? GNOME is a desktop environment. Right now, what I'm using is, you know. A GNOME desktop environment. So if I let's say minimize this, this is a GNOME desktop environment. I can switch back to KDE if I want. Okay. Let's say log out could you I'm logging out. Okay, I can say session, I can say three KDE here, change session. Username, the two password just for this session. You can see a lot of difference here in KDE. I know the resolution is all messed up, but don't worry about it. I mean, I take care of it. So, uh, wallpaper sucks. I can change that, but. Anyway, I mean, this is not what we're looking at. I mean, I never used this actually. Uh, not that never used. I mean, I, I I use that most of the time. So, end current session. So I'm going to log in as my. I've set KDE as my default here. So, SU dash is something which will switch you uh, to a root user. Um, root is the most powerful user for uh, Linux box. So we were looking into Etsy directory, right? So let's go back to our Etsy directory here. Hmm, GNOME. So GNOME. If you go to GNOME directory, I mean nothing much is there, but just to know GNOME means it contains all the configuration files for the desktop and KDE. Uh, is for, there's a folder called KDE that contains a configuration file, file for KDE, KDE desktop environment. Then we have grep.conf, that is a grand unified bootloader configuration file. So that is going to go ahead and now, and uh, grep is, I don't know, it's like uh, it's it's a main thing where which is going to start up your computer when the computer starts up it finishes the power on self test and then you know it's going to the device is going to look for uh, these loaders okay and the device is going to hand over the entire computer and entire system to the grand unified boot loader so grand unified boot loader is going to go ahead and now and turn on all the services necessary for you to log in and everything so all that is in this grub.conf so I'm going to say cd slash ls cd hc ls 
as pi group.conf here as you can see. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say you know I'm gonna say cat. Okay. <clears throat> So here is a configuration file grub file for grub, but we don't want to I mean we don't actually need it right now. We're gonna go ahead and I want to look into it later. So just to give you an insight, right? Peak view. Okay, so then we have six. You need to start to start up files and programs. So what files need to start, what files should not start, but what are the programs which will start with the computer, your Bluetooth service, internet service, all this kind of stuff. Init tab is a file which describes how the init process should set up the system in a certain level. That means what is init tab is something which is gonna as I said earlier, we have different run levels, right? I took you to a place where you had a, I know, a lot of run levels cd dot rc dot b and als you have different run levels here this one this one this one this one this one okay these are all different run levels in it dot t in the startup files and it contains in all the startup files and programs i mean all the startup files and programs are here okay but here this init tab what it's going to do it's going to, I mean, it's not in here actually, but init tab, what it's going to do is it's going to tell init.d what services to start in what run level. It's going to, it's going to tell init.d, hey, in rc.d, you're going to run only these, you know, these many services in so rc.d, you're going to run only, you know, few services, but not these services. In, in this run level, you're going to run, you know, this bunch of services, but uh, you, you have to stop you know, running these services. So that kind of you now configuration is in that init dot you now D init tab. I'm sorry. Okay. So let's try to find that. Where is it? I mean, is it CD init tab somewhere? It's not here. Where is it then? Is a file which Say fine in a tab and it's fine. Okay. Anyway, I mean, we just don't wanna. I mean, I can go ahead and I want to get that actually from this you know, NC directory, but that is not something what we are looking at. I don't wanna, <coughs> you know, mix up all the units and you know, jumbled up. So next we're gonna go ahead and I want to look into RPM Red Hat Package Manager. Red Hat Package Manager. What is Red Hat Package Manager? When you install. You have uh, two major package managers. One is Debian Package Manager or apt-get, alright? Then we have uh, RPM Red Hat Package Manager. It's uh, a Linux. Whenever you want to install a program or an application, it will be given to you with a source code as a tarball. You have to, you know, unarchive it and you have to package it for yourself. And Red Hat Package, man package Manager is basically, it's going to manage the package or package installation, right? It's gonna make it possible for you to install it automatic installation. For automatic installation, you can make packages. So we uh, and then we have security security folder. It contains all the configuration files for security tools. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, find command is actually used to find any tab. I mean, any anything anything in a computer, right? Uh, so just neglect it for a while. I mean, I forget that I use that find command. We're going to look into that later. We have a entire series coming out for that. Some uh, lessons. CD. Let's see. Security. LL. So. LL is nothing but ls dash L, all right? So ls dash L. So it's the same thing. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.